Hello students, welcome to SibaLearningZone.com. Today we're talking about the structural adaptations of unicellular organisms, just as we do all the time. Let's do a quick review of what we did the last time before we move on to what we have for today. Particles move in and out of cells by three main processes. And then they are diffusion, osmosis, and active uptake. Now diffusion is the movement of molecules from a region where they are highly concentrated to a region of low concentration. Active uptake is the opposite. It moves from a region of low concentration to a region of high concentration. Osmosis is a special type of diffusion where water molecules move across semi-permeable membranes from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. Good. Now, on to today's lesson, we're going to talk about how unicellular organisms are well adapted to life, how they operate, since they do not have complex structures like multicellular organisms do. Like humans, they are made up of millions of cells. But for unicellular organisms, their whole body is made up of just a cell. So a unicellular organism is an organism whose whole body is made up of one cell. And they are sometimes called single-celled organisms. These organisms lack complex structures in their bodies to perform certain life processes. But they are well adapted and can perform all the seven life processes. This makes them living things. Okay? Remember, we eat. Our digestive system breaks the food down. Our cells absorb the nutrients. But for them, how do they do all these? Let's look at how they do all these. These are three main examples. They are all prototypes. We have the amoeba the paramecium, and then the euglena. Amoeba, the paramecium, and the euglena. They are all prototypes. Now look at certain structures they have. There's a food vacuole, there's a nucleus, pseudopodium, contractile vacuole. Food vacuole, nucleus, contractile vacuole, pseudopodium. This one has a macronucleus, cilia, food vacuole, micronucleus, then the contractile. This also has a flagellum, pigment spots, nucleus, and then chloroplast. Now let's move on and see what we can talk about under each of them. Now the seven life processes. Going back, we remember we used the acronym Mrs. Gren to help remember. M for movement, R for respiration, S sensitivity, G for growth. R for reproduction, E for excretion, and then N for nutrition. That is Mrs. Green for us. Now let's see how they behave. The amoeba is a unicellular organism, so that means it lacks legs. Paramecium, flagellum, they all lack legs. They move, amoeba moves by forming the pseudopodium. So if it wants to move in direct, this direction, this side will extend. And then all the cell content will start flowing in that direction. And that is what we call the pseudopodium. The pseudo here means false. The pseudo here means false. So the amoeba produces false legs by extending its cell membrane. And then the cytoplasm and all the cell content will move and flow in that direction. This is more of a swimmer. The paramecium is more of a swimmer. It has these small structures, hair-like structures called the cilia. It beats the cilia in the water in the direction in which it wants to move. It's just like swimming where you move your hand and then legs to propel you forward. This paramecium also does the same by beating the cilia, the hair-like structures on its cell membrane in that direction where it wants to move. The euglena has the flagellum. This whip like structure it's like a whip it whips the water and then it propels it forward so amoeba moves by the pseudopodium paramecium moves by the cilia and then the euglena has the flagellum which it whips or it lashes the water to propel it forward so that is how they move for respiration they do not have the respiratory system they only have their cells. So what happens? The oxygen diffuses into the cell. 
carbon dioxide diffuses out. So oxygen diffuses in, CO2 diffuses out. The same applies to these two. Now once the oxygen goes in, the food molecules are broken down to release their energy for them. So oxygen diffuses into directly, carbon dioxide diffuses out directly. And then they get their oxygen which is needed for respiration. Light sensitivity or sensitivity. This euglena has a pigment spot. This pigment spot is used to move closer to where there's light. You remember euglena, you can see euglena having chloroplast. So it is used to move towards light so that it can photosynthesize. Now with these, if they encounter obstacles, they move in the opposite direction. If they encounter anything that they do not like, they move in the opposite direction. For growth, they increase in size. Their cells increase in size. They reproduce by binary fission. For that, I will explain in the next slide. And then excretion, they form contractile vacuoles. Now, these organisms normally can be found in water. Now, when the water has more water molecules than these organisms, the water will start to move into them by simple osmosis. Okay? When there's more water molecules in the pond where they are found, the water molecules will move into them. Now, they form contractiles or contractile vacuoles. These collect the water, the excess water and all other waste products. And then they are removed from the body. So this contractile vacuole will come to the cytoplasm over here or the cell membrane over here. will create a hole and then it is shipped out. This one is called a contract, also has a contractile. And then it forces water and other waste products out of the body. Remember, we as humans, we have the kidneys and then we have the lungs. And these help us get rid of metabolic waste. For them, they form the contractile vacuole and they help in getting rid of waste. And then for nutrition, they could be autotrophic or heterotrophic. This one here is autotrophic. So it can make its own food. For the paramecium and then the amoeba, they engulf the food. Now when the amoeba meets the food, it creates a hole like this. And then with time, the cytoplasm or the cell wall will come together. And then the food gets into the middle. So a food vacuole is created where enzymes will be secreted into this food vacuum to break down the food to release the nutrients for respiration. Now the paramecium, it beats the water. The water gets into its body. The food gets in there. And then the food vacuoles are created where enzymes act to release energy. So movement by pseudopodium, cilia or flagellum. Respiration by simple diffusion. Sensitivity, when they meet anything they don't like, they move in the opposite direction. Or the euglena has a pigment spot for sensing light. Growth, just an increase in size. Reproduction by binary fission. Please take note. Excretion by formation of contractile vacuole. So when you are asked what is the role of contractile vacuole, it is for excretion. What is the role of food vacuole, it is for digestion. Now for binary fission, this is how it looks like. We have one parent, the cytoplasm of the parent or the nucleus of the parent divides. This is step one. The nucleus of the parent will divide in step two. And then in step three, the cytoplasm will divide. And then in step four, two daughter cells are produced. So the parent will split into two daughter cells. That means the parent is no longer existent, but now two daughter cells are existent and that is it for binary fission. So first of all, the parent, secondly, a parent with two nuclei, thirdly, a parent splitting into two daughter cells and then for the fourth step, the two daughter cells will now exist. So today we talked about the structural adaptation, how living unicellular organisms are well adapted to the environment in which they live in, how they can perform their life processes. So unicellular organisms are also called single-celled organisms.
and they are organisms made up of only one cell they lack complex structures but have structural adaptations to perform their processes and we have we saw the contractile vacuole for excretion food vacuole for digestion pseudopodium cilia or flagellum for movement and reproduction by binary fission for sensitivity euglena has a light sensitive spot and then they respire by simple diffusion so these are just the structural adaptations please keep going over anything that you didn't understand you draw my attention in class so that i can explain everything to you have a nice day keep studying hard bye